5,300-year-old Iceman's Tale. Imagine hiking with friends in the Italian Alps when you stumble upon a desiccated body, half frozen in the ice. The immediate questions arise, how did this individual end up here? Could a similar fate await your expedition? However, this isn't a recent unfortunate incident, it's a glimpse into the past. The remains belong to the 5,300-year-old Iceman, preserved by the glacier for millennia. But how did this ancient individual find himself entombed in ice, and what secrets does his remarkably preserved body hold? Join us as we'll find out all the hidden secrets of the 5,300-year-old Iceman. Discovery Just over 30 years ago, the discovery of a famous mummy in the Aztal Alps, on the border of Austria and Italy, captivated the world. This mummy, known as Atzi the Iceman, was found on September 19, 1991 by two German tourists lying face down in the ice near a high-altitude lake. The extreme conditions at this location, nearly two miles above sea level, preserved Atzi naturally for over 5,000 years, thanks to the effects of sun, wind, and freezing temperatures. The body was discovered on September 22 and recovered the next day. It was taken to the medical examiner's office in Innsbruck along with other items found nearby. On September 24, archaeologist Conrad Spindler from the University of Innsbruck examined the discovery. Using the typology of an axe found among the items, he estimated the find to be at least 4,000 years old. Later, tissue samples from the body and other materials were analyzed at various scientific institutions. The results definitively revealed that the remains belonged to an individual who lived between 3359 and 3105 BC, approximately 5,000 years ago. More precise estimates suggest a 66% likelihood that the person died between 3239 and 3105 BC. Since the initial discovery, Atsi has become a global sensation, sparking interest in numerous books, documentaries, and even a feature film that reconstructed his life during the Neolithic era in Europe, as well as the circumstances surrounding his violent death. Today, Atsi's well-preserved remains are carefully maintained by researchers at the South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Bolzano, Italy. His body is stored in a specialized cold chamber, kept at a constant temperature of minus 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit. To ensure ongoing preservation, his remains are periodically sprayed with sterile water, creating an icy exoskeleton that maintains him as a wet mummy, a term used for bodies preserved in a wet environment. The South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology in Bolzano attracts approximately 300,000 visitors each year. These curious individuals come to marvel at Atsi through a thick glass window that provides a glimpse into his frosty chamber. The demand to see Atsi extends beyond the general public, as scientists seize the rare opportunity to study the remarkably well-preserved remains of a man who lived in an era predating the earliest cities in Europe and even before the construction of Egypt's first pyramid. According to Oliver Peskel, the Munich-based forensic pathologist overseeing Atsi's conservation, Atsi is, in my eyes, the best investigated human body the whole world has ever seen. Who is Atsi? Atsi, also known as the Iceman, was a slender and short individual, standing at a height of 5 feet 2 inches. When he met his demise, he was around 46 years old. Despite his seemingly small stature, Atsi had a robust and intriguing life story that modern science has uncovered. This ancient traveler was a left-handed individual who wore a U.S. men's size 8 shoe. His eyes, originally believed to be blue, were later discovered through genomic analysis to be brown. Likewise, his hair was dark brown, and he possessed a typical Mediterranean skin tone, as shared by Albert Zink, the head of the URAC Institute of Mummy Studies in Bolzano, a key contributor to Atsi's research. Atsi's physical condition and health have been extensively studied, revealing a myriad of details about his life. Not only did he have type O blood and suffer from lactose intolerance, but a rare genetic anomaly prevented the formation of his twelfth pair of ribs. This discovery, along with evidence of cavities, intestinal parasites, Lyme disease, 
and various joint and bone ailments, paints a vivid picture of Otzi's health struggles. His body, adorned with 61 tattoos, served more than just decorative purposes. These tattoos were strategically placed over areas where his bones and joints exhibited signs of wear and tear, as well as on points that align with modern acupuncture practices. Otzi experienced numerous physical challenges during his lifetime, including broken ribs and a broken nose. Horizontal grooves on his fingernails suggested periods of repeated physical stress, likely linked to malnutrition in the months leading up to his demise. Furthermore, genetic analysis indicated a predisposition to arteriosclerosis, and a CT scan confirmed that Otzi holds the title of the world's oldest known case of heart disease. Through carbon dating, it has been established that Otzi lived approximately 5,200 years ago, placing his existence between 3350 and 3110 BC. Body and Health Conditions When his well-preserved body was discovered, it weighed approximately 13.750 kilograms. The icy cocoon that enveloped him shortly after death played a crucial role in slowing down the natural process of decay. Initial reports suggested the absence of certain body parts, including his penis and scrotum, but subsequent investigations debunked these claims. Otzi's body held secrets waiting to be unveiled through meticulous analysis. His childhood roots were traced to the vicinity of Feldthurns in present-day South Tyrol, north of Bolzano. However, as he grew older, Otzi ventured about 50 kilometers farther north, settling in valleys. In 2009, a CAT scan brought to light an intriguing discovery, the displacement of his stomach to the lower lung area. A closer look at its contents revealed the remnants of a recent meal, consisting of ibex meat and wheat grains. DNA analysis confirmed the presence of ibex meat, indicating that Otzi had eaten less than two hours before his demise. Further inspection of his intestinal contents disclosed two distinct meals consumed in the hours leading to his death, one featuring chamois meat and the other red deer, both accompanied by herb bread, roots, and fruits. Otzi's diet wasn't limited to these meals, his provisions included processed einkorn wheat bran, likely in the form of bread. The vicinity of his body yielded traces of chaff, einkorn, barley grains, flax and poppy seeds, sloes, and various wild berries. Hair analysis painted a picture of his diet several months before his death, indicating consumption in a mid-altitude conifer forest with evidence of domesticated crops like wheat and legumes. Hair analysis provided insights into Otzi's diet from several months before his death. Pollen in the first meal indicated consumption in a mid-altitude conifer forest, while other pollens suggested the presence of wheat and legumes, potentially domesticated crops. High levels of copper particles and arsenic in Otzi's hair, along with his pure copper axe blade, led scientists to speculate that he may have been involved in copper smelting. Examination of the proportions of Otzi's tibia, femur, and pelvis suggested a lifestyle involving long walks over hilly terrain, indicating the possibility that he was a high-altitude shepherd. Modern 3D scanning technology was used to create a facial reconstruction, depicting Otzi as looking tired and ungroomed for his age. Health-wise, Otzi apparently had Trichurus trichura, whipworm, an intestinal parasite, and several of his right ribs were cracked. His fingernail lines indicated he was sick three times in the six months before his death. His epidermis, the outer skin layer, was missing due to the natural mummification process in ice. Otzi's teeth showed considerable deterioration from cavities, possibly linked to his grain-heavy, high-carbohydrate diet. DNA analysis revealed that Otzi was lactose intolerant, supporting the theory that lactose intolerance was still common during his time, despite the spread of agriculture and dairying. Endoscopic examination of Otzi's lungs showed blackening, likely from frequent exposure to open fires for warmth and cooking. Otzi had a total of 61 tattoos on his body. These tattoos were made up of 19 groups of black lines each ranging in width from 1 to 3 millimeters and in length from 7 to 40 millimeters. 
the tattoos included parallel lines along his body and on both sides of his lower spine, a cruciform mark behind his right knee and on his right ankle, and parallel lines around his left wrist. Most of these markings were concentrated on his legs, with 12 groups of lines. Microscopic examination of the tattoo samples revealed that they were made from pigment derived from fireplace ash or soot. This pigment was then rubbed into small linear incisions or punctures on Otzi's skin. It's believed that he was repeatedly tattooed in the same locations, as many of the tattoos appear quite dark. Radiological examination of Otzi's bones showed signs of age-conditioned or strain-induced degeneration corresponding to many tattooed areas. This included osteochondrosis and slight spondylosis in the lower spine, as well as wear and tear degeneration in the knee and ankle joints. Some speculate that these tattoos may have served as a form of pain relief, similar to acupressure or acupuncture, even though Otzi lived over 2,000 years before these practices were known in China. Initially believed to be the oldest tattooed human mummy, later discoveries in 2018 revealed tattoos on nearly contemporaneous Egyptian mummies. Many of Otzi's tattoos went unnoticed until 2015 when researchers used advanced imaging techniques to capture images on different light wavelengths, revealing the full extent of his tattoos that are difficult to see with the naked eye. What he wore He was wearing a bunch of stuff like a hide coat, skin leggings, a fur hat, and shoes stuffed with hay. But because the leather and fur were really old, scientists couldn't figure out exactly which animals the clothes came from. Knowing why people in the past used certain animals for their clothes, whether they were local or from far away, wild or domestic, can tell us interesting things about history. Like, did they wear clothes just for practical reasons, or did it show how important they were in society? Scientists looked at nine pieces of leather and fur from the Iceman's clothes and found ancient DNA in them. In a report they published, they said that the Iceman's choice of clothes was thoughtful and practical. They found out that his loincloth and hide coat were made from sheepskin, which other studies had already figured out. But the new analysis showed that the sheep he got the skin from were more like the ones we have today, not the wild ones. Also, they used skins from at least four sheep to make his clothes. Part of his coat was also from a domesticated goat, and the type of goat is still around in Central Europe today. The fact that they used parts from at least two different species of animals suggests that the Iceman's coat was put together with whatever hides were available at the time. His leggings were also made from goat leather, not from a wolf, fox, or dog like they thought before and they found similar leggings in Switzerland from 6,500 years ago that were also made from goat leather. This makes them think that maybe people chose goat leather on purpose because it had qualities they liked. The shoelaces on his shoes were made from cattle that are still common in Europe today. Even though the Iceman probably did farm and herding, the analysis showed that he also hunted wild animals in the mountains. His quiver, a thing to hold arrows, was made from a wild roe deer, and his fur hat was from a kind of brown bear that still lives in the region. What he carried Atsi carried various items that provide us with insights into his life. He had various items with him when he was discovered. One of these was a copper axe with a U-handle, measuring 60 centimeters, 24 in, long. The handle was skillfully crafted with a right-angled crook at the shoulder, leading to the blade. The axe head, about 9.5 centimeters long, was made of nearly pure copper through a process involving casting, cold forging, polishing, and sharpening. What makes Otzi's copper axe intriguing is not just its craftsmanship but also its origin. While copper ore sources were available in the Alpine region during Otzi's time, a study revealed that the copper in his axe came from southern Tuscany. The axe head was securely attached to the U-handle using birch tar and tight leather lashing. The exposed blade showed signs of use, indicating that Otzi relied on it for chopping and cutting. During his era, owning such an axe was not only practical but also symbolized status. Apart from the copper axe, 
Otzi carried a chert bladed knife with an ash handle and a quiver containing 14 arrows with viburnum and dogwood shafts. Two of the arrows had flint tips and stabilizing fins, while the remaining 12 were unfinished and untipped. The quiver also contained what is believed to be a bow string, an unidentified tool, and an antler tool for sharpening arrow points. Additionally, an unfinished Yulongbo measuring 1.82 m, 72 in, was found among his possessions. Atsi's belongings included berries, two birch bark baskets, and polypore mushrooms with leather strings through them. One of these mushrooms, the birch fungus, is known for its anthelmintic properties, suggesting medicinal use. Another mushroom was part of a firelighting kit, along with pieces of over a dozen plants, flint, and pyrite for creating sparks. DNA Analysis New findings about the Iceman's DNA challenge what scientists previously believed about his ancestors. In 2012, scientists examined his genome and proposed that his ancestors originated from the Caspian steppe. However, this conclusion raised questions because others with steppe ancestry didn't appear in the genetic record of Central Europe until about 4,900 years ago. According to archaeogenetics Johannes Krauss and his colleagues from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Leipzig, Germany, Otzi was considered an outlier due to his age and ancestry mismatch. To reevaluate Otzi's genetic information, the researchers assembled a new genetic instruction book. They discovered that the previous genome was contaminated with modern people's DNA. The updated analysis, reported on August 16 in Cell Genomics, revealed that the steppe ancestry originally attributed to the Iceman was completely absent. However, Otzi's genetic makeup still holds surprises. An unusually high percentage, approximately 90%, comes from Neolithic farmers. This is noteworthy compared to other Copper Age remains. Krauss suggests that Otzi's genetic composition reflects a unique heritage that deviates from the norm. Furthermore, the Iceman's new genome exposes additional details about his physical appearance. Contrary to artistic representations, Otzi had male pattern baldness and much darker skin. The genes responsible for light skin tones, prevalent in modern Europeans, didn't become widespread until 4,000 to 3,000 years ago. This coincided with the shift to plant-based diets among early farmers, reducing their vitamin D intake from fish and meat compared to hunter-gatherers. These revelations challenge previous assumptions about the pace of skin color evolution in Europe. Krauss suggests that people in Europe between 40,000 and 8,000 years ago had skin tones as dark as those in Africa. This challenges the conventional belief that Europeans became light-skinned relatively quickly. Instead, it appears that this transformation occurred later in human history, taking thousands of years to become commonplace in Europe. Moreover, Otzi had a really full stomach, and the stuff inside wasn't all broken down by digestion. In 2018, scientists looked really closely at what was in his stomach and intestines to learn about what he ate back in the Calcolithic times. They took tiny pieces from his stomach to figure out what he ate before he died. Surprisingly, people used to think Otzi only ate plants, but this study showed he actually ate both plants and animals. They found some special things in his stomach that give clues about what he liked to eat. There was something called gamma terpenine, which suggests he ate herbs, and some important minerals that show he probably ate red meat or dairy. By studying his DNA and protein leftovers, scientists could even figure out exactly what he had for his last meal, fatty meat from animals like ibex and red deer, along with a type of wheat called einkorn. Using super fancy tools like atomic force microscopy and Raman spectroscopy, they saw that Otzi ate fresh or dried wild meat. Another study had already found bits of charcoal in his lower intestine, suggesting that fire was around when he prepared his food, maybe to dry out the meat or give it a smoky flavor. His death The cause of death for Otzi remained uncertain for a decade after the discovery of his body. Initially, it was thought that he succumbed to exposure during a winter storm. However, later theories suggested a more intriguing possibility, 
that Atsi might have been a victim of a ritual sacrifice, possibly due to his role as a chieftain. This speculation drew inspiration from similar theories proposed for bodies found in peat box, such as the Talon Man and the Lindell Man. In 2001, a significant revelation came through X-rays and a CT scan, uncovering an arrowhead lodged in Atsi's left shoulder, matching a tear on his coat. Researchers theorized that he might have died from blood loss resulting from the arrow wound, a potentially fatal injury even with modern medical intervention. Further examination revealed that the arrow shaft had been removed before Otzi's death. Additionally, his body displayed injuries, including bruises, cuts to the hands, wrists, chest, and cerebral trauma suggestive of a head blow. One cut, reaching down to the bone at the base of his thumb, had not healed before his demise. The prevailing belief is that Atsi bled to death as the arrow shattered his scapula, damaging nerves and blood vessels before lodging near the lung. DNA analyses in 2003 unveiled traces of blood from at least four other individuals on Atsi's belongings, including his knife, an arrowhead in his quiver, and his coat. Interpretations suggested that Atsi possibly killed two people with the same arrow, retrieving it both times. The blood on his coat may have come from a wounded comrade he could have carried on his back. The posture of Atsi in death, frozen, face down, with his left arm bent across the chest, supports the hypothesis that, before rigor mortis set in, efforts were made to turn him onto his belly to remove the arrow shaft. The Cambridge World History of Violence in 2020 referenced Atsi as evidence of prehistoric warfare, adding a historical dimension to the mystery surrounding his demise. An alternate idea about where Atsi, the famous Iceman, met his end challenges the widely accepted notion that he died right where he was discovered. This different perspective, put forth in 2010 by archaeologist Alessandro Vanzetti and his team from the Sapienza University of Rome, suggests that Atsi might have originally passed away at a lower altitude and then got buried higher up in the mountains. The proposal is based on an analysis of the objects found near Atsi and their locations. Vanzetti suggests that the Iceman could have been intentionally placed above what seems like a stone burial mound. However, subsequent movements might have occurred due to thaw cycles, resulting in a flowing watery mixture driven by gravity, causing Atsi's body to shift before being frozen again. While some experts, such as archaeobotanist Klaus Egel, agree that natural processes could explain the body's movement, he points out that the evidence presented lacks a clear demonstration that the scattered stones actually formed a burial platform. Biological anthropologist Albert Zink adds another layer to the discussion, highlighting that Atsi's bones show no signs of dislocation that would be expected from a downhill slide. Additionally, the intact blood clots in his arrow wound suggest that if the body had been moved up the mountain, there would be visible damage. How Atsi was naturally mummified Atsi likely passed away during the early summer. Scientists determine this by studying pollen and the maple leaves found with him. There's a theory suggesting that the warm winds of summer may have dried him out. However, it's more probable that the extremely cold temperatures in the high mountain pass played a crucial role in preserving him. The freezing conditions acted quickly, preventing the natural liquefaction of his brain and other organs that typically occurs a few days after death. Many studies have been conducted on Atsi, the famous Iceman, and more are currently underway. The Institute for Mummy Studies has successfully sequenced Atsi's genome, enabling researchers to genetically analyze his gut microbiome. The goal is to gain a comprehensive understanding of the various bacteria that inhabited his stomach and intestines. The significance of gut flora diversity in relation to human health has prompted researchers to investigate Atsi's microbiome. Early findings from an ongoing study by the University of Trento, which involves Atsi and 6,500 modern individuals, indicate that the Iceman possessed three out of the four strains of the bacterium Prevotella copri. Interestingly, while indigenous people globally exhibit a variety of these strains, 30% of modern Westerners with P. copri typically have only one, leading to reduced microbial diversity. 
Otzi's gut also revealed the presence of Helicobacter pylori, a bacterium present in half of the world's population today, causing severe or deadly health consequences for approximately 10% of individuals. Intriguingly, the dominant strain of H. pylori in Europe today is a hybrid of Asian and African strains, whereas Otzi's strain is predominantly Asian. This observation implies that the African strain likely arrived in Europe after Otzi's death, contributing to the ongoing debate on whether H. pylori is a natural component of our gut flora or should be promptly treated with antibiotics upon identification. Further microbiome studies on Otzi's gut revealed the presence of the pathogenic ancestor strain of Clostridium perfringens, a bacterium responsible for causing food poisoning in contemporary times. To gain a deeper insight into the natural processes that have kept Otzi preserved for over 5,000 years, researchers at the Institute of Mummy Studies are currently examining the well-preserved remains of a chamois. This particular chamois, a type of goat antelope, was unearthed in the same region as Otzi during the summer of 2020. Despite being only a few centuries old, the state of preservation is remarkably similar to that of the famous Iceman. The scientists are focusing their investigations on two primary aspects, the exposure to the elements and the influence of microbes. To comprehend the impact of different environmental conditions on preservation, they are intentionally varying the humidity and temperature at which the chamois remains are stored. By doing so, they aim to unravel the intricate relationship between these factors and the preservation of organic materials. In addition to manipulating external conditions, the researchers are delving into the microbial community both inside and outside the chamois. The objective is to gain a comprehensive understanding of the various bacteria and fungi present. The hypothesis driving this inquiry is the potential for certain microorganisms to endure cold temperatures, suggesting that altering environmental conditions may trigger their resurgence. The Unimaginable Research of 2050 Unlocking more secrets about Otzi, the 5,000-year-old Iceman, relies heavily on technological advancements, which have been progressing rapidly. In 2012, researchers successfully decoded Otzi's genome using next-generation sequencing, a technique that was becoming more accessible at the time. Surprisingly, this breakthrough not only opened a window into Otzi's genetic makeup but also paved the way for the reconstruction of his microbiome, showcasing the swift evolution of scientific methods. As technology continues to advance, future research may delve into understanding the functionality of Otzi's body. This could involve analyzing proteins, lipids, and enzymes present in his tissues, providing insights into his immune system. However, the analysis of ancient samples, especially proteins, remains a complex process, presenting challenges to researchers in the field. While the potential for groundbreaking discoveries exists, Otzi's caretakers face the delicate task of balancing accessibility for research with the need to protect the mummy from invasive or frequent examinations. The museum that houses Otzi receives an average of 10 to 15 research requests each year. A committee, consisting of experts from various universities and the museum, carefully evaluates each proposal to ensure that the research aligns with ethical and scientific standards. To preserve Otzi for future generations of researchers, caretakers follow a cautious approach. They sporadically allow microbiology investigations through surface sampling, and the mummy is only rarely defrosted, with the last instance occurring in 2019. This careful preservation strategy reflects a forward-looking perspective, acknowledging that the scientific methods available in the future, possibly in 2050, are unpredictable. Therefore, maintaining OTSI in optimal condition ensures that researchers in the coming decades can leverage advanced technologies that are beyond our current comprehension. Legacy of the Iceman The legacy of the 5,300-year-old Iceman extends far beyond the Alpine region where his remains were discovered, profoundly impacting our scientific comprehension of prehistoric human life. Through meticulous examination of the Iceman's physical attributes, artifacts, and DNA, scientists have gained invaluable insights into the diet, health, and genetic makeup of Copper Age communities. 
the Iceman's remarkably preserved state has served as a time capsule, unlocking a wealth of information about ancient technologies, cultural practices, and societal structures. Displayed in museums worldwide, the Iceman has become a powerful educational tool, captivating public interest and fostering a deeper understanding of our shared human history. His frozen silhouette, clad in Neolithic attire, serves as a tangible link to the past, sparking curiosity and engaging audiences in the wonders of archaeology. Ongoing research, propelled by advancements in scientific techniques, continues to unveil new facets of the Iceman's tale. As technology evolves, the study of ancient human remains promises to yield further revelations, offering glimpses into the lives of our ancestors and contributing to broader narratives of human evolution and cultural development. The Iceman's legacy thus stands as a testament to the enduring importance of preserving and studying ancient remains and shaping our understanding of the past and the human journey through time. To wrap it up, the journey into the 5,300-year-old Iceman's tale has uncovered a trove of key findings and insights, shedding light on the mysteries of our ancient past. Yet, as we reflect on the ever-evolving narratives surrounding this remarkable discovery, it becomes clear that numerous enigmas persist. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more intriguing glimpses into the wonders of our past. And if you liked this video, click here to watch the legendary lives of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra.